Hello everyone, welcome to our second webinar. Today we are going to discuss uh, renal vascular hypertension and more broadly renal artery stenosis. Uh, renal artery stenosis uh, is identified by uh, luminal stenosis exceeding 80% uh, associated with usual drop in the pressure across the stenosis of more than 20 millimeters of mercury. And this quite frequently can be combined with a number of uh, clinical presentation including polycontrolled hypertension, which is refractory to the uh, multiple medications, as well as um, rapidly deteriorating uh, renal function and uh, also flash pulmonary edema. The types of renal artery stenosis are based on the underlying etiology and obviously the most common one that we encounter in uh, our community is atherosclerosis, which is responsible for almost 90% of renal artery stenosis. Um, which are identified. Uh, this condition tends to be found in all the patients with a high burden of atherosclerosis in the aorta, with, which quite often spills into the renal arteries and affects the origin of those arteries. Uh, treatment of this condition is uh, these days uh, predominantly based on endovascular interventions rather than open surgery and uh, angioplasty and stenting of uh, osteorenal artery stenosis. Uh, has very good results. But there are also non atheromatous uh, con conditions which are resulting in renal artery stenosis and those are predominantly fibromuscular dysplasia as well as Takayasu arteritis. Those conditions are uh, quite often identified to occur in younger generation of patients. Um, approximately 10% of lesions affecting renal arteries uh, will be related to uh, fibromuscular dysplasia. They will be in a quite uh, frequently family history associated and um, in particularly uh, in fibromuscular dysplasia uh, often we will have female patients affected uh, with the location of the lesion affecting mid segment of the renal artery and with a very typical appearance um, on either CT angiograms or um, arteriograms, um, which are obviously utilized for treatment. Generally speaking, those conditions respond better to angioplasty, utilizing either plain balloons or drug coated balloons. Uh, finally, Takayasu arthritis uh, is another condition which is um, less frequent in our society, but can also affect uh, renal arteries. A uh, couple of examples, this is a typical appearance of fibromuscular dysplasia affecting uh, uh, renal artery with a number of little aneurysmal changes uh, interrupted by multiple stenosis and this appearance is um, quite often referred to as a string of beads. Uh, on the other hand, we've got a typical osteal lesion in the uh, renal artery stenos uh, stenosis due to underlying atherosclerosis with the typical spill of atheroma from the aorta affecting the proximal segment and ostium of the uh, renal artery. Takayasu disease um, results quite frequently in more smooth and long segments of stenosis affecting proximal aspects and middle segments of the renal arteries and um, as shown in those uh, photographs uh, condition, uh, this condition here can be treated either with the uh, plain angioplasty balloons or with stenting if necessary. Uh, the main stain of treatment is uh, to perform uh, endovascular interventions, so uh, this requires local anesthetic, uh, which is usually sufficient. Uh, patients undergo flash diagnostic renal angiography to confirm lesions which are usually earlier on identified by duplex um, ultrasound and uh, CT angiograms. Uh, then catheters are positioned in appropriate parts of the aorta and subsequently um, angles are established to uh, obtain best profile of the vessels. Um, the current equipment allows us to utilize uh, minimal, uh, minimal uh, sizes of the devices uh, where either balloons or stents are delivered on the very small platforms, therefore access vessels don't necessarily have to be of large caliber. Um, quite often lesions require to be uh, treated with predilatation, so therefore we create little track that is subsequently stented in order to um, obtain durable outcome. Uh, renal artery stenting is a very effective way of treating that condition. 
um, and successful stenting quite often results in significant improvement in blood pressure control in those patients who present with renal vascular hypertension and in, not infrequently uh, there is not just a reduction in number or dose of medications but quite often those medications can be ceased completely. Um, this is an appearance of uh, renal artery stenting prior and uh, post completion of the procedure which uh, obviously uh, shows us um, clear improvement in the appearance of the uh, right renal artery stenosis. It is important to understand that uh, renal anatomy is variable, therefore uh, multiple renal arteries can be present and it is not unusual to um, see that uh, despite only some of those arteries being affected by stenosis, symptoms can still occur even if the other ones are of normal appearance. These uh, pictures will show us typical um, procedure where it uh, starts from the femoral artery axis which is obtained under ultrasound guidance uh, and local anesthetic only. Uh, subsequently, a uh, flash iodogram shows us the appearance of uh, bilateral osteorenal artery stenosis, which in this particular patient resulted in uh, significant symptomatic uh, renal vascular hypertension. Both arteries are measured in order to obtain um, size of the appropriate stent. Uh, then lesion is crossed with a very small caliber wire uh, and subsequently predilated with the balloon uh, which opens the track for insertion of the stent. Stent is then delivered and deployed to cover the entire length of the lesion and quite often stent protrudes into the aorta. Uh, upon completion of stenting the um, diagnostic angiogram confirms uh, successful outcome and also identifies no injuries that would occur to the distal aspects of the renal artery or its branches within the kidney. The similar procedure is performed on the other side and now both renal arteries are stented and uh, obtain its normal appearance again. This patient uh, responded very well to this procedure and within the few days uh, all her medications have been completely ceased. Uh, therefore, uh, it's fair to say that uh, investigating uh, Hypertension should involve um, a renal artery duplex ultrasound if there is a suspicion that the renal artery stenosis can be an underlying etiology. Uh, treatment is based on minimally invasive uh, local anesthetic based procedures uh, which involve angioplasty and stenting or angioplasty alone depending on the underlying etiology. Uh, the rate of complications is very low and the results uh, once the success, technical success is achieved are uh, fairly reliable. Uh, this concludes our uh, second webinar regarding renal vascular hypertension and renal artery stenosis. I hope you enjoyed that and I invite you to join us for future webinars.